I'm Dan Langan and I can make anything out of cake. Every week, Food Network challenges me to a brand new cake baking challenge. This is Dan Can Bake It. I have a brand new cake box right here, fresh from Food Network. And inside should be a clue to this week's challenge. So I'm gonna open it up and see what's inside. Feels like a heavy one this week. Some tool and stars, I like that. It's a nice reveal. If you give a mouse a cookie, I loved this book when I was little. The Cat in the Hat, Dr. Seuss, classic. I've made a lot of cakes like this, let me tell you. Guys, rainbow fish. Oh man, this takes me back. I always loved how like the fish looked like he was painted with watercolors, and he has these really cool silvery scales that are really like metallic. I remember trying to pick them off the page when I was younger. They never came off though. All right, so let's see what this says. It seems like it's a book challenge, but what do we got? Create a 3D cake inspired by a children's book. I got it. So these are all classic children's books, iconic children's books, really recognizable. I mean, for me, it's not too hard. I literally was obsessed with this book when I was younger. I might have to make a rainbow fish inspired cake. Maybe I'll grab some like cookies and milk and maybe like a juice box or something and like get to brainstorming this cake, see what I come up with. What I'm gonna do is create this cake, sculpted into the shape of the fish. I covered it with some chocolate scales, some lips, and some eyes to my fish. Used wafer paper to make the fins and finished off the entire thing with this isomalt coral. First thing I wanna do is make the scales for my rainbow fish inspired cake. So what I'm gonna do is take a bunch of different colored melted candy and pipe the chocolate right onto a parchment lined sheet. Grab a large offset spatula and just do a little swipe. And then after every swipe, clean off the spatula just so it's fresh swipe each time. The easy way to do this, the first thing my mind goes to is just cutting out scales from fondant, but I think that's kind of boring. That's kind of, it's been done, I feel like. I'll do a good bit of different colors. Then when I put them on the cake, I can layer them up, I can alternate the colors, and I'll get a really nice variety. What I'm gonna do is use some gray chocolate. After the gray chocolate dries, I can paint it with some luster dust, it'll look like silver. You could do a lot with these scales. They could be feathers, they could be scales, they could make a great roof. There's a lot you could do with this technique. After you pipe these, after you shape them, you just wanna pop them in the fridge so that they harden up. So I've got this whole tray here that we made earlier. Some of them I started to paint. To paint chocolate, you have to use vodka or maybe like lemon extract, something that's alcohol based. Pour just a little bit of alcohol, not that much. And I'm just gonna add some pearl luster dust. I'll mix the luster dust in with the vodka. I'll make sure it's a nice paintable consistency. I don't want it to look too watery. So I'll just paint this on and it dries really quickly. To get this silver, I think it's a lot easier to start with gray and then just paint it with white pearl. I think the look of the pearl is much nicer, it's a lot brighter. So I'll just let those dry until they're not shiny anymore and then if I wanna give them another coat, I'll just give them another coat. We've got our center structure built for my fish cake. Add some rice cereal treats on the underside of the fish to create the belly. Then my team stacked some sheet cakes filled with buttercream around a center structure. Thank you, Mackenzie. So I have my cake here. And when Mackenzie stacked this up, she actually made the bottom out of rice cereal treat. If I tried to carve this whole thing out of cake, gravity would kind of take effect and the cake would just fall. What I want to do is just make sure that I line my template up, take my carving knife and just kind of start to map out where this cake is going to get carved away. Keep checking, making sure that not taking too much away. Towards the back, I do want to try and taper it down just because that's where his back fin is gonna go. So I'm just trying to point the back part just a little bit right here. So I'll just make sure both sides are really even. That's really important. All right, so I'm actually really happy with how that looks. And I just wanna taper in the entire fish. So this sharp corner here, I'm just gonna round the whole thing out just by running my knife along the edge, just like this. A lot of crumbs and kind of little edges of cake are sticking out. Just put on a pair of gloves and I kind of compact the cake. What I wanna do is take some cake scraps or kind of cake pot mix and just fill in any of these gaps that I have. This is kind of like spackle or cake spackle. This cake pot mix, it's actually just cake crumbs mixed with buttercream. Basically the same thing the cake is made of, but it's kind of moldable. I just want to point this just a little bit, give myself a good spot to attach that last tail fin, and I think that looks perfect. So I've got some white chocolate ganache here. I love this stuff. It's literally just white chocolate chips and heavy cream. It's the perfect coating, I think, for cakes like this because it kind of hardens up and makes this nice chocolate shell. And this is like the perfect consistency too. It's like nice soft buttercream. I want to get everything coated. And then before it sets too much, I'll just grab my scraper and kind of smooth it out. Right now I'm really just looking to refine the shape. This doesn't actually have to be perfect because I just need a good foundation for those scales. But what I want to do is chill this 
So I'm gonna pop this in the fridge. I can tell this firmed up really nicely. So instead of covering the front in blue fondant, what I'm actually gonna do is just take more of my ganache that is colored this nice like light blue, paint it right on the front of the cake. And I'm also gonna get that color without even using any fondant, which I think is pretty cool. And just smooth over this just a little bit. So I think I'm ready to add my back fin and my scales and I'm seeing these fins kind of lay back onto each other. So I'm gonna grab my scales and fins, thank you. Got my wafer paper fins. Push this straight into the back of the cake. And then I'm gonna use buttercream to attach these just because if I use buttercream, I can kind of reposition them. So I think what I'm gonna do is just put a little buttercream on the back of each one. See if I can just lay them just like this. Some are a little smaller, some are a little bigger. So hopefully that makes it a little easier to kind of lay them next to each other, to lay in layers. Before I go any further though, I just wanna mark a line and add this fin so that I know everything lines up later. These are just about four layers of wafer paper stuck together with a skewer in between the layers and then you just paint them with vodka food color mix and you got this really nice watercolor effect. So these scales are gonna take a long time and there's a lot of detail to fit in this cake. So I'm gonna hand this off to my pals in the kitchen who can finish putting the scales on for me. So I mean, these chocolate scales really look incredible. So last thing to do is just add my fins. I have more wafer paper fins. I'll just press these right into the bottom. First thing I'm gonna do is add his eyes. I'll just use some piping gel just to make them sticky. Lips are gonna go right on the front. Final thing I wanna do is take my glitter pump filled with edible glitter. It just shoots glitter into the air. I think it's a perfect finish for this cake. The one thing that's really gonna take this cake over the top is the sugar coral that I'm gonna put on the base of the cake. I have a bowl of ice here and I have some isomalt in the oven that I melted down earlier. I'm just gonna pour it right over the ice, just like this. So it's kind of like that temperature shock that makes this really cool mass of sugar that has a lot of holes and really cool crevices and stuff. So what's really cool too is if you don't wanna mess with isomalt, you could use those melted coins, the same chocolate that I used for the scales on the fish. You can melt that down, you can pour it in ice and you'll get chocolate coral instead of sugar coral. Once that hardens, what I'm gonna do is just take some gloves and I'll put the gloves on to kind of protect my hands as I'm pulling this out of the ice. So kind of just pull it out. See, it's really effortless, it's so easy. You really don't have to do anything. So every time you do this, you really get a different shape and a different design, which is really cool. I'm just gonna let these sit on this rack here, let them dry, I'll let all that ice melt out. Then I'm gonna make a couple more batches of ice malt and I'll dye them all different colors and I'll have a bunch of different batches of coral. So I've got my coral here and it dawned on me that I have all this gorgeous coral and my board was so small. So what I actually did was just place my fish cake board on an even bigger board and I'm gonna fill in the gap between my build board with some cake. So now I'm gonna switch to some brown sugar. I'll just start breaking this up, kind of like fresh soft sand. What I'm gonna do now is pick up some of my coral right at the back of the fish, just like that put different colors next to each spot just so there's a nice contrast. I want a smaller piece of this orange, so I'm actually just gonna carefully break it. Just kinda see how it breaks. I like the different levels. It's a little higher in the back and then it starts to taper towards the front. I think it's a really cool setup. This really takes me back to my childhood, I'll tell you. Food Network challenged me to create a 3D cake inspired by a children's book. I have my cake, which I sculpted into the shape of the fish. I covered it with some chocolate scales, used wafer paper to make the fins, and finished off the entire thing with this isomalt coral. I really hate to cut into this one because it's one of my favorites, but I always like to see what my cakes taste like, so I'm gonna do it. And I think the easiest spot is probably right by the head. So I'll just go for a slice right here in the front. Sometimes I forget that these are actually cake until I cut into them. Gets me every time. If you wanna see more incredible cakes like this, make sure to subscribe to Food Network and let me know what you wanna see me do next in the comments below.